Now, they're minerals. Jesus, Marie, I got some geodes coming that are very delicate, all right? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hobbies you may never have heard of. Now, this is one of my favorite lumps of matter in the world. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Oh, that's adorable. Oh. I love it, it's so clever. Installation art in a living tree. For this list, we'll be looking at the most interesting but obscure pastimes. Do you have an unusual hobby that most people don't know about? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Toy voyaging. Don't have enough money to see the world? Have an extra toy laying around? Well, now you too can enjoy the world through the eyes of your toys. Ah, Mr. Honey Bunny! <laughs> a spin on the message in a bottle idea, folks who partake in toy voyaging are all about seeing where the item will end up. Adventurers can purchase a small tag that they affix to their toy. The tag provides information about how people can update the toy's online travel log with where the toy is, what it's seen, and any adventures it's been on. Almost 7,000 people partake in the activity from all over the world. Dig out your old stuffies and send them on a journey. Number 9. News Rating It might surprise you to learn you've probably already seen this hobby in action. Ever watch the news? Have you spotted someone in the background who obviously isn't supposed to be in the show? Welcome to News Rating. Jim, I got to send it back to you in the studio. Every time we turn the camera on, we've just got a lot of idiots getting in our way. The entire point of this unique hobby is to get yourself on camera during a live news report, even if only for a few seconds. Whether you're just standing there or waving like mad, once you've made it on air, you're a news raider. It's a more extreme take on the idea of photobombing. Who would have thought it would turn into a hobby? And it's likely one of those international cities might... No! <laughs> scared the shit. We're working here, man. How you doing? Number eight, extreme ironing. I've always wondered what it would feel like to wear something that's been ironed. That'd be sweet. Yes, extreme ironing is a real thing. And there have been competitions around it. Created by Tony Hyam in 1980 while poking fun at his brother-in-law, it soon branched out to become far more than just a joke. <laughs> Admirers of this unique hobby have ironed in the craziest places, including on giant rocks, underwater, on the back of a cab, and even while skydiving. There's even a Guinness World Record for 173 people ironing underwater. We're not sure if the clothes would have come out with fewer wrinkles, but uh, that's some impressive dedication all the same. <laughs> Number 7. Element Collecting We learned in high school chemistry class that an element is a substance that cannot be broken down into a smaller substance using typical chemical process. Elements, they combine and change into compounds. Well, that's... that's all of life. We also learned that there are 118 known elements on Earth. For fans of science, particularly chemistry, the idea of collecting one of each of those might sound like an intriguing idea. Um, one of my favorites is this one. You can probably work out from its position, it's osmium. Look no further than the World Wide Web and you'll see that element collecting is a real thing. Of course, some elements are hard to procure due to their volatile nature or their outright rarity. But for those who love a unique collection, snagging elements may just be for you. And if it's in America, it's just a constant chorus of, oh, that's so cool. Number six, competitive duck herding. You've probably heard of sheep herding. Maybe you've heard of goat herding. But duck herding as a competition? Really? Yes, it really is a thing. Found now more as a team building exercise, duck herding is indeed something people do for fun. Exactly as it sounds, you put together a group of ducks and attempt to get them through a small field course. Whether it's fences and gates or just from point A to B, it's up to you and sometimes your trusty canine assistant to get those quacks in line. Hey, if it doesn't work out, at least the bills involved aren't huge. Number five, tree shaping. Unlike earlier items on our list, this one goes down the path of being a bit more on the artsy side. 
Ma, these new finger razors make hedge trimming as much fun as sitting through church. Tree shaping is all about taking the natural growth from trees and other similar plants to create either usable structures or some type of art piece. I had the idea in 1986 to grow, if I could grow a chair. Right. So I started doing it and it's all evolved from there. How long did it take? Probably seven years before I could sit in it. Various techniques such as framing, grafting, pruning, and even time itself can be used to alter the natural growth pattern of trees. Some of the work created by these tree sculpture artists is breathtaking. Beyond that, many of these other formed branches have been put to real use as furniture and even bridges that can hold up to 50 people. Number four, benchmarking. No, it's not about writing graffiti on a park bench. What you'll be looking for are marks like these that are cemented permanently in rocks or a pavement. All across the United States, there are more than 740,000 marks that have been placed. Benchmarks, also known as survey markers, are typically small round disks that mark a specific geographic location. According to Wikipedia, the markers were often used as part of triangulation surveys for land within the U.S. This is the Donald Rose Memorial, a gentleman who died in the First World War. Some of these markers were set over 100 years ago. As part of a small group of hobbyists, benchmark hunting has participants using GPS devices, compasses, and even metal detectors to find these little disks spread out across the country. Here it is, 27152. So that's one we can put into the database. Number three, Hikara Doradango, AKA dirt polishing. For those who have lived in snowy areas, you've probably held or thrown a snowball or two. But have you ever made a mud ball? Originating in Japan as Doradango, it's an art form that consists of transforming dirt and water into a perfectly round and smooth sphere. A quick Google search will yield you an assortment of beautifully polished shiny spheres that resemble billiard balls. The result of careful craftsmanship yields some strikingly beautiful art pieces. That is dirt, water, and this little elbow grease. Even the Mythbusters took a go at it when they successfully debunked the saying, you can't polish a turd. Well, 106 gloss units for ostrich. 183 for lion. Number two, soap carving. For thousands of years, people have been carving into countless mediums. From stone to clay and wood, carvings of all sorts can be found all over the world. Soap carving is one that has been around a long time, but has seen some resurfacing as a result of the pandemic. A quick online search finds people have been taking to this hobby to help pass the time while in quarantine. From such a simple substance, you can create simple birds and flowers to full-on dragons. Part of what makes it so appealing is that the materials are cheap and it's a forgiving medium. Dig out those extra bars of soap from under the bathroom sink and give it a shot. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Collecting in-flight air sickness bags. We really hope these aren't used bags. Mooing. It's a little less dangerous than cow tipping. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Geocaching Started in 2000, geocaching is a treasure hunting activity that uses GPS units or mobile devices to find containers hidden almost anywhere in the world. With millions of active caches worldwide, odds are there's probably one hidden not far from where you live. I have most enjoyed just getting to see more of the Pacific Northwest through geocaching with my team. Players use their device to find a container, then sign a log sheet with a geocaching code name. Aspects of the previously mentioned benchmarking and toy voyaging are also part of the world of geocaching. When we travel, we go on vacation, we go geocaching, we find really cool places that are not on your tourist maps. It's an activity that knows no limitations when it comes to participants, who might be active hikers on trails to treasure seekers in cities. There's something in it for everyone. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. I get up, check my phone to see.